Have you ever wanted your animatronic eyes to do more than just blink? Well today we're going to make them squint in real time using the Teensy 4.1 and a couple of TFT displays. Did you see that? These uncanny eyes just learned to squint. Let's go ahead and get started. In this video we'll be using a Teensy 4.1, a light dependent resistor, a couple of round TFT displays, a breadboard power supply, a breadboard, breadboard jumper wires, a 10k resistor, a 0.1 microfarad and 22 microfarad capacitor for each of the two displays and a 1000 microfarad capacitor at the breadboard power supply. This setup is very similar to the previous video setup. I've added a 1000 microfarad capacitor at the 3 volt rail for the power supply. I've also added this light dependent resistor. One leg is connected to the 3.3 volt rail. The other leg is connected to ground using a 10k resistor and that same leg is also connected to pin 14 of the TNC 4.1. These are the components and connections that I needed in order for uncanny eyes to squint when exposed to bright light. And this capacitor was added to smooth out any power fluctuations. As you can see, the displays are powered and connected the same way they were in the previous videos. Here's the code we'll be using. The first thing I want to do is go to the config tab and decide just how big I want the eyes to appear on the display. In the previous video, we went from 240 to 160. And if you keep it at 160, the squint will look about like this. But for this video, we're going to change it to 128 just to show you that you can kind of customize it to however you want. And with 128 display size, my squint is going to end up looking like this. The next thing I'm going to do is go back to the main code tab, the .ino tab. I'm going to scroll down to the area where I can control the size of the squint, whether it's a large squint or a small squint. And what I'm going to do is change this value right here. The smaller the value, the thinner the squint, and the larger the value, the more of the eye you're going to see, making it look like less of a squint. Now during the squint, it wouldn't make much sense for the eye to look up and down and in random movements, so what we're going to do is keep the eye steady, horizontal, and look from side to side within the squint so that the pupil never goes out of frame. And we're going to do that by keeping IY equal to 512, which keeps the vertical movement of the eye centered. And we're going to allow X movement of the eye between 350 to 675 instead of full range. And this allows for a more restricted left to right range. And you can make that range smaller if you want less movement. You can make this range larger for slower movement and this range larger for longer pulses between movements. And together this will give you a natural left to right eye movement while keeping the pupil within the squint so that it doesn't go out of frame. So with the display size on the smaller side at 128 and the squint height at a 0.35, this is what your eyes should look like on your TFT displays. And if you're on our email list, you'll receive the code for this exact setup as you see it here. You'll also receive the wiring diagrams and any other information that I present in the videos. So if you're not on that list and you want to be on that list, send me an email, let me know. Details are in the description of the video. Let's change it up a little bit and create a squint when our uncanny eyes are exposed to bright light. And when the light's taken away, those eyes go back to a normal size. I'm going to go ahead and show you how to make some modifications to the code for this so that you can make it adaptable for your own project. On the config tab, the display size is the main eye size control and it'll determine the size of the eye that shows up on your display. Here's what it looks like with display size 160. I like them a little bit smaller because the rendering is better on the display. But you can change it and make it a little bit larger if you like. Staying on the config tab, if you scroll to the bottom, you'll see iris min, iris max. This is so you can control the pupil size. A lower value here is a smaller pupil in bright light, and a higher value here is a larger pupil in darkness. Let's go back over to the main code tab, and here you can make all kinds of adjustments for your eyes. A higher value here would require more light to trigger a squint, and this value indicates the point where you fully squint. The lower the value here, the faster the eyes will squint, the lower the value here, the faster the eyes will open. The hold time is the value that determines the amount of time it takes to go from squint back to normal. At the moment, the value is set at 3000, and you can see how quickly they pop right back open after the light is removed. So we're just going to change it to 9000, and you can see there's a subtle change, but a more realistic change in my opinion. See that? A little bit slower. If you want to change the squint intensity, let's go down to line 286, where you can change this value right here. It's currently 0.95. You can change it to 0.8 for less squinting or 0.98 for more squinting. But if you change it to one, the eyes are totally closed. If you change it to zero, the eyes don't squint at all. Here's another area you can control. It's the minimum eye opening. Ours is currently set at 0.25, which means the eyes never close more than 75%. If I change the value to 0.3, it's a subtle change and you can kind of see it. I don't know if you can see it or not. 
but if I change it to 0.15 now you can really see the change and this may be helpful to what you need for your own project I was noticing that the eyes weren't fully opening so I raised the light threshold and that fixed the problem so just remember that the regular light from a room or even from your computer monitor can not affect the way the eyes react Remember to join the email list. I don't spam your inbox and I don't share your email address. So it's been a great way to share code and programs. So if you're interested, be sure to check the description for details. And I hope this was helpful to you. That's all I have for today. Thank you all for watching. I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, be sure to like the video by clicking the thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you enjoy this type of stuff. Share it with somebody who will find it useful. And I'll see you again with another video.